What is up guys, Rick Kak is here, and today we have some absolutely massive Destiny 2 information coming from the just released Bungie Weekly Update, which has detailed a bunch of new official Destiny 2 information, and guys, Today is a big one. We have a ton of really relevant information, so let's just get started. Firstly, we got two brand new trailers that came out today for Destiny 2. The first one is a cinematic trailer called Last Stand of the Gunslinger, and it depicts Cade Six's final moments leading up to the Forsaken campaign. Really amazing story. Like when Bungie does these cinematic stories, they they look incredible, honestly. And uh, it's four minutes long, so we're not gonna watch the entire thing in this video. But it's linked down in the description. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Now, as for any new information about Forsaken coming out with this trailer, not really. Indicative of most cinematic trailers, it didn't necessarily reveal anything big. We got a little bit of a better look at some of the barons involved in the campaign, but it's mostly just a really sweet uh, trailer involving Cade 6. But moving on from there, we actually got another trailer. This one featuring gameplay from Gambit, which I'm sure you guys have seen, but, but the interesting part is that this is actually a trailer for a free Gambit trial. That's right. Before the Forsaken expansion comes out on September 4th, you'll be able to play Gambit for a 24-hour period starting September 1st. That's right. At 10 a.m. Pacific, September 1st, Gambit is going to go live and it's going to end the following day, September 2nd, at 10 a.m. So it's literally just 24 hours on the dot. Now, that's pretty darn sweet. Having played Gambit multiple times personally, it's a really, really fun new game type. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did, but unfortunately, even though it has been playable at certain places, you either had to go to E3, stand in line to play it, or uh, stand in line even longer to play it at Guardian Con or Gamescom, so most people haven't had the chance to play this. And I'm sure some people are still on the fence of whether or not they want to even buy Forsaken and playing one of the signature new game types coming would, you know, help people decide. So thankfully, everyone who has Destiny 2 is going to be able to try it for this 24 hour period. By the way, when it is live, it's not going to be dropping anything new. It's just going to drop year one rewards in case you are wondering. Now, moving on from there, you may be wondering, when exactly is Forsaken coming out? Like, we know it's coming out September 4th, but when in the day? Well, Bungie actually went over that. So, Destiny 2 will be brought down for maintenance starting at 7 a.m. Pacific, and you will have to download a day one patch. That patch should be available to all players by 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Now, the maintenance for this patch and everything will end at 10 a.m. Pacific. So, the patch becomes available at that 7.30 time, so you want to have your console a program to auto-download, and if you don't, you know, wake up to make sure and make sure you're downloading that day one patch, but it should definitely download in time for that 10 a.m. Uh, launch date, and once that 10 a.m. time occurs and the maintenance stops, it will be available for all players. So you'll be able to start Forsaken at 10 a.m. Pacific, September 4th. Now, speaking of exact start dates, you may be wondering, well, when is the raid going to come out? This is actually a really big question because sometimes, you know, for the original launch of Destiny, it took, I think, a week for the Vault of Glass to come out. But a lot of other times, it's only three days. The last couple of expansions, you only had three days to prepare for the raid layer. Well, this one, thankfully, it's a little different. The new raid, Last Wish, is going to come out September 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific. So that's the second Friday after Forsaken releases. So over a week to go and actually prepare. I think this is absolutely awesome. Like I honestly think this is such a good change. It makes it so that 
you know, more people have a chance to be geared up and ready to do that raid the first day it comes out because a lot of the times the people completing it aren't necessarily, you know, even the best players. Well, they're obviously good players, but they're more just the players who are able to play so much that they're the ones able to gear up. Now, if you're a talented player who, you know, has work and isn't able to play 24 hours a day, you still will have a chance to gear up in time for this raid drop. I think that's a fantastic change. It will also take a lot of the pressure off so you know people like me who make content and I'm sure a lot of you guys too will be able to experience uh, the DLC a lot more and explore it and do other things rather than just furiously grind to get raid ready so I think this is an extremely positive change I'm super happy to be reading this and there you go that's the launch date for the raid now, moving on from there, Bungie discussed mods. The mod system is changing dramatically with Forsaken. Gun mods, for example, will give things like, you know, extra rounds in the magazine, in-air accuracy, extra damage against bosses, or extra damage against basic enemies, like a bunch of different stuff. But how do you get these mods when Forsaken arrives? Well, they talked about that. So, firstly, you're going to be able to direct buy weapon and armor mods, and there'll be updates daily so different ones will be available daily from the gunsmith for mod components so how do you acquire mod components well year two armor mods will always drop one mod component and year one legendary armor mods will always drop mod components for the armor mods and for weapons is kind of the same thing year two weapon mods always drop one mod component and legendary shards when dismantled and year one legendary weapon mods always drop one mod component and gunsmith materials when dismantled now alternatively all exotic armor drops regardless of year have a chance to come equipped with a mod non-raid year two legendary weapons and armor mods have a small chance to come equipped with a mod and if you dismantle those things with mods in them, you will get the mod as a resource when you dismantle those items. Now, actually, armor and weapons purchased directly from vendors do not come with mods ever. Something else interesting to note is that year two armor mods will be available to be slotted into both year one and year two armor mod slots. So year one armor actually may be a little bit more relevant than we previously thought. Now, moving on from there, we've got a big chunk of information because Bungie actually gave us some preview notes of the big patch coming right before Forsaken on August 28th. So these are some of the things that are changing in Destiny 2. First off, with the Hunter, Marksman's Dodge is now considered a reload. So when you Marksman's Dodge, it will actually activate Kill Clip, Rat King, etc. Great change. Also for exotic armor, the Celestial Nighthawk exotic helmet will grant 33% of your super energy back if you kill a target with the golden gun shot. So that's going to actually make that piece of exotic that was already seeing play quite a lot better. It's going to justify being able to use it on powerful enemies and get it back for the boss rather than just saving it 100% for the boss. Also, Wormhusk Crown will no longer start regeneration of health and shields. Ooh, big change. Instead, it will grant a larger health and shield bump at the beginning of dodge instead of at the end. Moving on from there, Warlock. Increased healing rift effectiveness. Also, Empowering Rift now increases precision damage. Previously, bonus damage was capped at the weapon's precision damage in PvP. So Empowering Rift is gonna be a lot better now, in PvP especially. Exotic Armor for the Warlock, the Skull of Dire Ahamkara, they increase the super energy gained from Nova Bomb kills. Also, killing higher ranked enemies will grant more super energy. I already use that exotic in PvE quite a bit, super fun. I'm gonna be throwing that thing on even more now. Also, for the transverse of steps, they enhanced mobility, and after you sprint for a short time, your currently equipped weapon will be automatically reloaded. Now, moving on to the Titan. Firstly, Rally Barricade no longer requires players to take cover to reload. It now feeds ammo to your magazine over time. Wow. So, basically, your Titan Rally Barricade is becoming the, I think it's the Luna Faction Boots? Exotic boots for the Warlock that just automatically reload your guns. Like, that's a big change. That's a big 
buff to Titans right there for PvE especially. Moving on from there, Exotic Armor. The Helm of Sate 14 now grants allies an overshield for a short duration when they're passing through Ward of Dawn. Wow, that's a big change. Like, Helm got way more relevant now. Put down your Ward of Dawn and everyone passing through gets an overshield. Like, in PvP, that's going to be actually pretty darn sweet. Even in PvE, that's going to be very, very powerful. Moving on from there, Mask of the Quiet One. Increasing energy gain from incoming damage and, while critically wounded, health will be granted from kills. So, you're going to be a lot more survivable with that exotic helmet equipped. Moving on from there, for Grenades. So, Axion Bolt, increase base damage, increase the amount of time it takes for tracking strength to lessen. Also, for Flashbang Grenades, they increase the base damage. For Incendiary Grenade, they also increase the base damage, a little bit of a formatting error there. For Storm Grenades, they increase the base damage. For Scatter Grenades, they retuned range and fall off ranges for the detonations for more reliable damage. For Magnetic Grenades, Fusion Grenades, and Flux Grenades, they increase the base damage. Damage is now the same whether a target has been struck or simply walked over a grenade when detonating. Magnetic grenade now detonates a second time only if it's attached to a target. The second detonation no longer occurs on the grenade itself and will now be applied to each individual target hit by the initial detonation. Really interesting change. I really want to try out magnetic grenades after this update. For skip grenades, they increase the impact damage of each skip drone impact for a higher total potential damage. For void wall grenades, they increase the damage of the initial void wall wave. Moving on from there, we have some miscellaneous quality of life changes. Swords will now have the ability to accept shaders. They're adding a timer to the status effect for Healing Rift, Empowered Rift, and Rally Barricade to communicate the time remaining before they expire. Moving on from there, the wanted escapees from the Prison of Elders will roam the open world. They will not drop rewards until September 4th. After that, they're increasing the difficulty of Lost Sectors. For example, the EDZ Lost Sectors will become 240 power. Hopefully, they increase the rewards as well. For Zur, it says his will is not his own. Will no longer display a vendor icon on destination maps will no longer be tied to flashpoints. So also, he has a clear purpose, but cannot explain it. Forgive him. Faded engrams will only grant pre-forsaken exotics. So that's some um, big changes. So firstly, you know, where is Zer? Videos have now become relevant again. Before, no one gave a crap about Zer because it was so easy to find, but now, like, that's actually going to be an interesting thing. And I actually kind of like not giving out Forsaken Exotics with Faded Engrams just because your rate of claiming these exotics grows so much that you basically have a certain amount of weeks before you're guaranteed every single exotic for Forsaken. And I think making exotics a little bit more rare, a little bit more elusive is better for the game as a whole. It, it sounds mean to say, but handing out exotics like candy at the beginning of D2 really hurt the game because, you know, people didn't want to play when they had all the exotics, right? So again, I think that is a positive change. All right, guys, and that is it for the main changes coming soon to Destiny 2. Again, big update today. Really excited about the raid date. Like, all that stuff seems sweet. Absolutely watch that cinematic trailer if you haven't. And that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.